So we're going to go through create, market, and sell. And I just want to let you know as well that they don't always have to happen in this order. Before I created Facebook for pharmacists, I had 22 copies sold, over 2,000 euros worth of orders. Best feasibility study you can do. I didn't drive around and go, would you do a, a pharmacy or Facebook for pharmacy course if I created one and go on to the next one? Like, traditionally, it's probably the way to go. With online courses, you can put it out there and say, this course will be available from the 1st of December and we're taking orders now. And you can build in scarcity, which we'll look at, and we can build in urgency, which is another sales strategy. There's only going to be 20 people allowed, and it'll be cl booking closes on the second. But the point is that they don't, you don't have to, like in the, sometimes in the music business, you don't have to create first. In most other businesses, or a lot of other business, particularly the physical product business, we have to create it first. Not necessarily the case with your online course. We're creating it, it launches, you can order it now. There might be an, uh, an enticement to pre-order it, there might be a, an additional bonus if you order now, etc. And once you have enough of orders to cover at least, at the very least, the time it takes to create it, which might be 20 to 40 hours, of course you have to deliver. If, for example, you only get one order, it's also a great feasibility study. Nobody wants it, or at least online at the moment, or they don't want it from me, or whatever. But it's a great feasibility study. So I had, oh, I had 22 copies sold before I hit record at all. Just make sure you, know, you <laughs> go and record it and don't get addicted to the selling part and keep selling and go, I have something to deliver here. Start to record. So you can market and sell it first. People can pre-order it and then you can create it. So choosing your course, one piece of advice would be to conduct a survey. Now what I didn't do was conduct a survey. What I'm suggesting you consider and what I done afterwards is do some do a, a survey on the further courses and I should have potentially done a survey at the beginning as well so I would suggest you do a survey and the survey simply says I'm currently creating a new course that will help you learn to dance learn to do yoga learn Infusionsoft learn Photoshop etc please take a few minutes to answer the following three questions and you email this to people who don't mind getting emails from you, i.e. your email list, which we'll be looking at in detail. So what are the top three questions or frustrations you have when it comes to X? People buy to avoid pain or get pleasure. You want to find the pain points. Your course will get rid of the pain. It'll be easier to sell it to them. And then what is the ideal format? You're hoping they're going to say ebook, audio, video, but they may say group coaching or other. But again, as part of your feasibility study and survey, you'll know does what I do and teach lend itself to online? Now, what I have discovered over the last two years is that in Ireland, it, we're, we're not at the point yet of how. Um, natural it is for people to learn online as much, for example, in the UK or particularly the US. But it's changing rapidly. How many people have gone onto YouTube to look at uh, how to figure something out, how to do something? How many people? James is writing, but there you go. So everybody, that's online learning. How to is the most popular term typed into YouTube. And it's the second biggest search engine in the world. So people are doing it already. I had a, a talking to a guy in a digital marketing course once, and same question, and I said, what did you put in? How to change the battery in a Mini Cooper. Brought it out on his phone and done it. And he said he's afraid of 
mechanics or being a mechanic or working under the hood, as they say in the US. But brought the phone out, obviously good coverage. Yeah, pause, play, change the battery. So we're doing it unknowing to ourselves. The demand is already there. Now you might say, well, if YouTube is the second biggest search engine and that's where people are, are going, how am I going to compete with free? The answer to that is YouTube's quite disjointed and while you might find one video about how to set up a Facebook ad, you have to, might have to go looking somewhere else for the next one and the next one. And the other thing about YouTube is you have to know what to ask. If you didn't know that you could do ads on Facebook, you wouldn't put it into YouTube in the first place. Does that make sense? And there's no, there's no structure. You have to find a different person, potentially, for a different video. Unless they've got the entire course up there and they're using YouTube as their marketing and sales strategy, which is something you will cover as well. Do you have, then uh, the next part of your, your question is, do you have any other questions or feedback about this course? And this can be gold as well. Will it cover this? And you're going, I didn't think about that, but it will now. Or will it show me how to, will it, will it, you're going, yes, it will. Because I haven't recorded it yet, and now that you're asking, maybe other people are asking the same question, so it's going into my course. Now, if they say, will it cover this, and it doesn't, then that's fine too. Gives you an idea for the more advanced version that you can charge more for, or a whole new course. And at the end, optional then, would you, would you like me to inform you when this is available? And then you've got a warm list of people that you can email and say, remember that survey you did? The course is now ready, and here it is, and it's online, and it's 95 or 495 or whatever it might be. And you might even say, and for taking part in the survey, we'd like to give you a discount coupon or code that gives you 10%, 50%, 90% off. Totally up to you. The point is that you have content for the course, you have potential warm market who are going to buy it, you know what needs to be in it, you understand their pain points, and you're going to get rid of them. And 10 people could be enough to give you a good, uh, um, a good survey result.